Well, welcome back to Diesel and Iron, everybody. Today's Down and Dirty. We're actually gonna interview Cody. He's someone that's been out here working with Rick and I. Uh, Rick actually got in contact with Cody a while back. So I'm gonna let Rick kind of introduce him and, and give you the backstory on how they came to be. So glad you guys are here. Uh, a couple years ago, I was looking for some help online, obviously with the trade shortage. And I put up a ad looking for some labor help or operator or whatever. And at the time, Cody here was about 15 yeah. years old. And he reached out with an inquiry. And uh, I mean, at that point in time, I just needed some help. And I was like, well, let's give it a shot. I had a couple 33 year old men trying to labor and no call, no show. And here was a little 15 year old putting in some ambition, um, just wanting to work. So he reached out to me and it was a couple of years ago. Four oh, years four ago. Four years ago. You're 19 now. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> here we are ever since. So let's go through that process of you seeing that ad and being that young little little boy. Well, I've always worked, Rick, be way before I even met you. And uh, always laboring, too. I was the kid who started off just mowing grass around the neighborhood. There's this old dude that lived down the street from me. His name was Brian. I worked for him for a while for shitty pay. Easy with the old man Brian. <laughs> I love it. Call for what it is, Cody. Not this old man Brian, a different one. He shaves oh, the gray right off, dude. Don't let him fool you. And, uh, yeah, anyways, it was hard work, shitty pay, and I loved it at 10 and 11 years old, and that's where my work ethic started and wanting to do labor and trades and stuff like that, and... Then after that, it carried on to roofing and just doing whatever I could to make some money until I met you. Then I got pretty serious about my career and what I wanted to do in life because I'd already tried roofing and grass mowing, shit, cut down trees, and, you know, wasn't really found what I was serious about yet. But operating and finding the trade that was for me because there's so many, it just I just knew it, actually. So you kind of just took it on a limb hoping for and giggles yeah well what i was getting at is that i just kind of explored the different trades and explored things i could do with my own two hands since that's the best way i learn to find a career that's what i did i just went and explored and i tried different things wasn't as scared to get my hands dirty wasn't scared to sweat you know what i mean and put in hours of work and now you know, four years since I've met you later, I got a pretty good job. I do some operating. I still do some laboring because I'm the young guy. And, but it's pretty good. I'm never not busy. There's tons of room for new employees in this trade and in all the trades, really. If there was people like me who wanted to go out and do it. I mean, I've been in trouble with the law at a young age. and Back when I hired you. Yeah. When you hired me. I was in, on probation for stealing my mom's car and just taking it for joy rides. Everybody knows idle hands are the devil's playground, especially when you're a young teenager. So, and you have mom's car. Yeah. <laughs> and he <Yeah>. can drive. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> but you told me you got in trouble. Yeah. So I had to go pick you up and. Yep, no drag driver's you license. Rick picked me up on my first day working for him in his pajamas at like 7 in the morning or earlier took me to his house to get shit ready while he ate breakfast and got dressed. And yeah, that's it went on like that too for a while you picked me up and Yeah, helped to get your driver's license and get you Yep. somewhat going on a career path of Yep, before the end of my first season working with you I had a car of my own, my first car yeah. of my own. So talk about your schooling for a minute. Did you did you complete with your GED? Nope, I didn't. I was in high school when I started working with Rick and I was going to school and working. But then soon work kind of picked up more and I just slacked off in school a lot and I just dropped out of school to be honest and just stopped going and started working. I've learned everything I know by doing it out in yep. the field. Yep, and, hands on. Yep, hands on, kinesthetic learning. And uh, you know, it's really worked for me. There's a lot of people in the trade who don't mind if you don't have a high school diploma or a GED Absolutely. or college. They so your work ethic's a little stronger than a GED yeah. or a diploma. Yeah. Yeah. Well, with the shortage right now, especially if you have the will 
other human beings are going to notice that and they want that on their team. That's they, the most important part of a high school diploma, I believe, in my opinion, is to show that you can commit to something and stay and learn and finish. And at that point, when you have a high school diploma, all you show is commitment and the ability to learn. The knowledge that you learn in high school doesn't even mean much. They don't teach you about what you need to know in real life. Well, and take that a step further. That's what I've said for the longest time about college. I went through college, and I can tell you there's about three terms that I use on a daily basis that I learned from my actual college education. The rest of it was literally, like you just said, perfectly getting a piece of paper that said, I was able to sit through the classes, and I was able to check the boxes. And But, but when it comes to real job applicable knowledge, nothing. Yeah. And you also went to college after you left me. You went down to Indiana for a while. Yep. I did get into a college called Jobs Corps, and it's for people who don't have their high school diploma yet but are want to go to college or maybe they've had a hard time getting their high school diploma and want to go to college. They help you actually get a GD or a high school diploma and then put you through classes to get certified in all different types of trades only. And uh, What did you go for? Heavy equipment operating okay. mechanics. Okay. And but I was only there for a few months and left because college isn't for everybody. It's still a classroom setting. Yep. And that's just not for me. And also, you don't get paid to go to college, so I needed money. So you worked at a sawmill down there. Yeah. And did a little masonry. Yep. Yeah, I've I've you done. Want to talk about that a little bit? How the trade of it was and what did you do? Every trade that I've done has one thing in common, and that's the requirement for willpower and the requirement for the ability to do hard work. So once I established that I'm capable of those two things, I went into a sawmill, which is somewhere I've never even worked before, and started busting my ass, really. And well, What did you do there? What was that like? It was nice. You say it was hard. It was nice, I thought at first because it was inside and it was winter time when I started, but then it was summertime and it was hot as f inside the, <laughs> inside the mill. Inside the mill is really <coughs> dusty and yeah, it was hard. It was back breaking labor. I mean, we're moving boards, logs all day long, debarking railroad ties, cans. You are talking about carrying like an eight by eight, 10, 12 foot long, big chunk of wood. Yeah. Yeah, like a couple hundred pounds. Yeah, we not know carried cans, railroad ties. I mean, we didn't have to carry them to Nam and back, but we still had to carry them outside of the building from inside of the building, and that was hard for sure. Yeah. And then you got into the masonry trade. Yep, mace. Uh, I actually went to two sawmills. The second sawmill I went at, I was making whiskey barrels. Mm -hmm. The first one was railroad ties and cans, pallet boards, masonry trade. That was uh, finish work just like all masonry is pretty much finished work other than basements. And that really showed me how to be precise with my work and care about the outcome and look ahead. You gotta really be alert of what you, your layer is gonna need next in masonry work. When you're the mud man, which is what I was, you make mortar, you stack brick, you stack block, you feed the layers. And it taught me how to look ahead of the game and see, you know, what the next steps are. That's something that I learned from masonry work. But after that, I came back to Michigan. That was all out of state. And, uh, and how'd you get back up here? I came back up here for better job opportunity and just hopefully a better way of life. And since I've been back here, I've had the best job of my life so far and still doing tons of work with you. There's no lack of work anywhere in the country right now when it comes to labor. Like I say I, your hard work brought you back up to Michigan. It's important to always work hard because I called you back when I needed a job and I got a job. I've called other people back. I've had people call me back asking me to work when I wasn't even in state because you leave that impression on people and you build your own worth in this trade. And in all the trades, you build your own worth. Yeah, that. so that's something that I think you perfectly summed up one of the my favorite things about the trades is you make your your place in the world your hands build your spot where you're gonna exist and if you're lazy about it you're not gonna have a comfortable spot but if you bust ass and and you work hard you're gonna have a nice comfortable position wherever you want because people need that in this 
and that's so different from the white collar world and that's something that I really really cherish about the blue collar world is you make your spot yep absolutely and a good example of a way I've been making my spot this year in 2021 is that when I went and started working for the company I'm at now it's not a big face company that's doing union everything it's not a union company it, it is a mom and pops company kind of you'd call it and uh, I went and I put in that hard work and those hours and that commitment showed them that I could do that and then they start putting me into the machines and into operating you don't just start off operating you right. got to know how to do all the labor first and show you got to make them money before they give you money operating is a, is a good paying job that somebody can make a career out of yep you know work 40 years and retire and that's my plan in life is to work 40 years in this trade and retire and and a good labor makes a pretty good operator though you yeah. got to be able to know what they're doing not just jump in the machine being an operator you got to be a phenomenal labor so you know how to keep him working how to keep things moving along so when you get in the machine and get that other view and perspective it's a whole different view yep. yeah so it, now you have the knowledge and concept and that hard work because you've been in the trenches and you put in the time and you learned and you watched other operators like today you watch brian tackle monster trees down with an excavator and you've seen how he was exposing the roots and digging them down to shove these over creating holes for the trees to crash versus just walking up and cutting it with a chainsaw yeah absolutely I, every single day the jobs aren't always the same in this trade or in any trade really so every single day i learn something new i see something new I'm reminded of something that I already knew or I'm more better at something I already knew. Yeah. Something's always happening in the trade, you know what I mean? Yep. For growth. And that's another thing I like is that it's not like an office job where you just sit at one spot for years before promotion. You can go out and bust your ass a little extra hard for a few months and get a promotion. Or Absolutely. Get, work harder, you, you know, you go up. Yep. That's just how it works. And, uh... It's really simple to understand if you want to understand it. Absolutely. Now, what was it like, and what did you expect? Like, when I, you first met me, you carried a compactor from my garage to the pickup truck, right? Yeah. Now, what was it like being a young man getting into this field? Because obviously you had no knowledge of getting into it. What was it like, and what do people expect getting into something like excavation or clearing trees, working yeah. with... Uh, guys with knowledge them kind of screaming and yelling at you a little bit at first you kind of just like geez this is gonna be a rough day but then yeah. you start learning it's like a brotherhood and kind of them taking over and watching you yeah it is it definitely everybody looks out for each other because nobody wants to see anybody else get hurt on a job site and that that's pretty common all the way around the board anywhere you go but for me starting out, it was kind of nerve wracking. I mean, I really had to clear my mind on that ride over to your house that first day and get myself ready to do anything you asked me to do with no complaints and ready for you to yell at me, tell me what to do. You know, I got to accept that before it even comes my way. I, you got to go in there with the mindset of knowing nothing about nothing and willing to do anything to get the knowledge. Yep. So when you gave me my first text you told me get ready to get those compactors in the back of that truck to that truck i said okay whatever it takes i'm gonna go over there and do it and yeah i did it it was i look very out hard. the window and this kid is carrying a jumper jacket 15 years old like this no walking joke, about 300 over. feet and put it in my <laughs> truck and i about fell over i can't even pick it up carrying right, 300 right. feet <laughs> yeah, and then I, I taught them how important a green strap was that I still carry today, don't I? Yeah, and you know what? That's the only reason I still have a back. <laughs> you, that's another hard lesson learned. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not every lesson's easy to learn. You got to keep, you got to stay, uh, what's it called, redundant? No. You got you to gotta basically keep you advancing. Bounce back. You got to yeah. be able to bounce back from if something happens. I mean, a huge mistake I made Right when I started working for this company, they put me into a skidster to move a trailer, just a regular car trailer or truck trailer, and uh, I broke the jack right off of it. 
Like it just slipped off the pheno hitch and it broke. And instead of being down and out about that all day, all I did was go and say, hey, look, I made this mistake. This is what I did. And we fixed it and went about our day, got tons of stuff done. We still dug like three basements that day and that's quite a bit. Yep. Now, a lot of the other questions Brian and I get asked quite a bit is um, about trade school. So everybody wants to go pay for these heavy equipment classes. And we're talking, what, 30, 25, 15, So anywhere, thousand? the most common is right around 15 to 20 grand All right, for so, six weeks. So 15 to 20 grand for six weeks. And here you are making a living wage, bought a pickup truck. And to answer the question in your own perspective, instead of two guys that have been in the field a while, and you're younger now, would you willingly go pay to learn heavy equipment, pay 15 to 30 grand for five to six weeks, or would you go out in the field and it sounds like you're getting quite a bit of heavy equipment experience? Yeah, I would definitely, obviously what I did do was go right out into the field. I would never pay that much money to work, to show me how to work. When there's such a need for workers, people are willing to show you the way, you know what I mean? And not only that, but a lot of trades, people use the terms of dying trades. That's one used for masonry work a lot, is that it's a dying trade. And really it is because people don't want to do the work part of it, yeah. and they'll be overeducated and underexperienced. I mean, you can go to college, get out of high school at 18, go to college for four years, and then come out with a piece of paper saying that you know how to operate or you know how to work on heavy machinery or something like that, but you don't have all the experience that somebody who would have taken the same path as me as four years in, uh, in the field doing what we got to do to get jobs done. I mean, that's really how you learn it is by doing now, it. How many hours a month now that you've been back in Michigan for almost a year now, how many hours a month do you think you're actually operating besides just labor now because they do throw you in the machine quite a bit you'll text and say you're into off-road truck or pushing dirt with a bulldozer and yeah I'm, hands I'm, on like they give you a, a quick crash course and then off all, all of a sudden you're bouncing around or yeah well i mean i picked it up pretty quick with uh with a lot of the stuff i learned it by doing it i got the feel for it and after proving to them that i can I have the problem solving skills to do the labor and the work ethic to do the labor. They didn't mind as much putting me into a machine because they seen my willingness and my ability to think because that's what it all is. It's operating like a lot of other trades is more on your brain than your body. Yeah. And now that I'm operating, I'd say at least one full day a week hours wise so one 10 10 hours a week minimum of on a site on a real job site yeah that's operating. on a site on operating doing the work that's dozers off-road trucks excavators skidsters rollers that's jackhammer attachments magnets buckets thumbs i mean that's operating time doing real, real work. stuff yeah, yeah real work that uh and sometimes getting, and it can leave paid. you on yeah oh you're yeah getting i'm getting paid it. i'm not that's the biggest sell for me is the fact that I don't get paid to go to school. I pay, I'm not going to pay somebody else for me to learn something when somebody's going to pay me to learn something. Absolutely. And it's the same knowledge. Yep. It's a more valuable knowledge in all honesty. Like you're like you've summed it up with you're learning from guys who have learned all the hard ways. They've learned all they've made the mistakes, they've learned all the hard lessons, and they're saving you all of that frustration and hassle because you're on a real job site doing the actual work, it's really easy for me to say, hey, in fact, we did it today when I was knocking over a couple of those trees. Hey, even though you're 30 feet away from me and there's really a small risk of this tree coming towards you, it's happened, it can happen, you need to just pay attention when I drop this tree. That's the sort of stuff that you're going, you're only gonna get those sort of conversations and those lessons in a real work environment. You're not gonna get it coming out of a classroom to go spend five, you know, five hours running around a skid steer, a bulldozer, and an excavator. So you get an hour in each. Yeah, yeah, you definitely need to learn teamwork and communication skills here. And nobody is the same, I've met at least, as people in trades. 
I mean, I've met a lot of crazy characters in this trade alone of operating. And uh, you definitely got to know your crew for sure. You got to be able to pay attention, ha be alert, and not be super emotional either. Yep. Because people are going to tell you what to do. People who are underneath of you, people who are above you, all of that. And you got to listen to them. If you don't know how to communicate, be a part of a team and listen, operating it's not for you. Yep. Because half the brain is the operator and half the brain is the laborer. Yep. It's how it works on every single job site on operating. Yep, absolutely. Well, I think that answers quite a bit of the questions of should I go to school, not go to school, just from a young 19-year-old man out in the field. Yeah. Versus asking guys that have been in the field a long time, so... Yeah, and you know what? I've worked with people who are fresh out of college, just a little bit older than me, and... What kind of college? Uh, operating school. I don't know exactly what college they went to, gotcha. but... But they went to heavy equipment Yeah, they, they told me that they graduated with a degree for operating, working with machines, and I'm not here to put those people down, but I would say that I was a better operator than them because even though they knew it on paper, what the machine did and everything like that, me, I can get into a machine. I might not know what every single button in that machine does, but I can operate it safely and correctly and get the job done. Absolutely. And so that's really what matters. And uh, college is just a nickel holding up a dollar to me, really. Yep. Thanks for the honest input. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, thanks for watching, everybody. If you got any questions or comments, obviously drop them down below. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks, guys. Bye.